There too now for Telstra's long-suffering shareholders. Almost one and a half million Australians have endured a gripping roller coaster ride since answering Canberra's call to buy shares in the nation's former monopoly telco, only to watch helplessly as the value of those shares plummeted. To aggravate such heartburn, shareholders must now try to digest the recent historic agreement in the national parliament to chop the company in two by forcibly separating its retail services from its wholesale infrastructure, which government intends to buy back as part of the new national broadband network. Telstra itself argues strongly that its future in the brave new world post-NBN looks bright, but already great bickering has broken out between some of its major shareholders over the believability of Telstra's optimism. Business editor Greg Hoy reports. Facing the jury. As Telstra's 11 directors shuffled out to front the recent annual general meeting, they knew patience had worn thin for 1.4 million long-suffering shareholders fretting about the future of their investment and dividend payments. We share your disappointment with our current share price. The disappointment obvious in a meet and greet session earlier on arrival. Yeah, but this long term, we keep losing money. Yeah, no, no, we understand. No, no, yeah, but no, you don't understand. This yes, is I do. I'm a shareholder. You're a shareholder. And you're giving away 90% of our profits into dividends. Right. Well, why don't you bring it up in the meeting? What has so humbled the old titan of Australian telecommunications, which still handled 4.1 billion local calls last year, 15 billion mobile calls, reaping $3.9 billion in profit? For starters, fear of the inexorable approach of the NBN, to prepare for which federal politicians have just agreed to split Telstra in two halves, dividing its wholesale from its retail arm to encourage competition from smaller rivals. The government has delivered an historic win for Australian families and businesses through the structural separation of Telstra. But regardless of more than $11 billion payable to Telstra to hand over its profitable wholesale copper network to the NBN, Telstra shares have dropped 8.7% in the last 12 months alone as high-profit fixed-line customers switch to the less profitable mobile market. Fixed-line revenues have bled almost $2 billion a year, with further falls forecast despite Telstra pledging to invest $1 billion to cut costs, improve service and try to recapture lost market share. We believe there are several factors putting pressure on the share price. The first is Telstra's lack of growth during the past year in total sales revenue and profits. Then there is the uncertainty surrounding the ongoing NBN negotiations, uncertainty about Telstra's future strategy. Telstra's future strategy is a big bone of contention, especially after stinging criticism by its largest shareholder, the government's future fund, which still owns 8.8% of Telstra, though it's selling out as fast as it can, hardly helping the share price. Though its chairman, David Murray, wasn't available for interview, the Future Fund opposed all management resolutions at the recent Telstra shareholder meeting and expressed its concern both about the level of telecommunications experience on the board and its scepticism about Telstra management's future strategy, rankling other major shareholders. They've obviously formulated quite an aggressive strategy. You know, other institutions such as ourselves I may do it by writing letters to Telstra, by, by engaging with the, the board or chairman, so every institution um, you know, does things differently. And Future Fund have decided to do it very publicly um, in terms of their uh, unhappiness with what's happening at Telstra. As head of fund manager Investors Mutual, Anton Tagliaferro controls close to 40 million Telstra shares and is one of those who insist they're undervalued. Telstra has to focus on its uh, other operations. It's got the largest share in, in mobile. It's got a 40% market share. It's still got the Yellow Pages census business. It still owns 50% of Foxtel. So all those businesses should experience uh, growth of some form. So overall, it's not you know, a terrible picture. Are the glory days gone for Telstra? Well, they've certainly uh, extracted tremendous benefits from their uh, dominant position in the fixed access network over the last 20 or 30 years. Uh, it's clear now that they're going to lose that benefit. 
uh, they're very much now going to have to uh, live on their wits. Um, they're going to have to do it through clever design of um, products. If so, Telstra's destiny may be very much in the hands of Chief Crystal Ball Gazer, Technology Officer Dr Hugh Bradlow and his merry mob of technologists. I actually feel pretty optimistic that NBN creates an enormous opportunity to, to take the whole telecommunications market forward to deliver these new experiences, new services, new capabilities. The man whose department boosted Telstra's coffers by around $30 million since April by introducing the broadband connected telephone or T-Hub and broadband connected television or T-Box, Dr Bradlow and Telstra executives now preach the greatest telecommunications revolution is nigh. Brought to you by Faster Broadband. In the, the world of the future, some of these new things will create even more remarkable behavioural change. If you're getting instantaneous, relevant data about things that are happening around you and you've got a device on you that can use that data, it's just a powerful way of changing the way you behave. Everything that can be connected will be connected, not just at home, not just at work, but in between as well. Everything from phones to cars to fridges, to televisions, will be connected. Telstra is banking on a telecommunications bonanza connecting machine with machine that will, in 10 years, create 50 billion connections globally to mobile networks and, by 2030, up to 1 trillion connections across fixed and mobile networks. As for the certain demise of fixed broadband, it's been greatly exaggerated, Telstra insists, and others agree. Our view is that um, fixed broadband is going to have um, a very important role to play in the future. The majority of people are going to want both fixed and mobile broadband. We're about to see a massive growth in video communications and being able to do that between businesses, between businesses and their customers and between consumers. And I think that journey is just about to take off and it'll be huge. It's going to change the way we communicate much richer. And if you think Telstra's head is in the clouds, you're quite right. The telco is licking its lips at what it hopes is the golden opportunity of cloud computing, which Telstra predicts will downsize computers, whose memory banks will be outsourced to service providers like Telstra via the internet, shifting computing hardware into the internet cloud. You then just got a very simple appliance which doesn't require maintenance and upgrading and updating and all the intelligence is back in the network. Telstra dreaming. Question is, will Australians continue to buy shares in Telstra's high-tech vision once the rivers of revenue from its old wholesale network have run dry? What Telstra has in mind here is offering extra value to households and in doing so, making it more likely they can hang on to those customers in the future. Now, the threat they face in that market is that there are a lot of device manufacturers. That is a huge opportunity for uh, service providers such as ourselves because really our business is taking technology, complex technology, and making it work in an intuitive way for you, the consumer. And we've been doing that for the last 140-odd years since Bell invented the phone. Business editor Greg Hoy there.